Yeah, so uh, I have a 20 year background in the Department of Defense, starting on active duty. Uh, started out in telecommunications, moved into networking, project management. And as part of that, I was handed a cybersecurity program, which got, uh, allowed me to wet my beak. And then before you knew it, I moved over to the actual uh, cybersecurity office. And my, my most recent role there was being in charge of cybersecurity for 28,000 square, uh, 28,000 user network, both classified and unclassified. And then I just realized I absolutely love it and and wanted to do it. Well. I've also noticed, like I, I just looking at notes that I have on you, I've also noticed a lot of people who are in cybersecurity today have come through the government. Um, is there a reason for a trend like that? Like, do you know? Yes, uh, definitely, because they take it really, really seriously. Um, they have very elaborate programs for it, whereas in the, the private sector, I, it's usually more about what needs to be done, what's an adequate level, like let's not let's not go above and beyond more than what we need to. So we get that solid foundation working for the government and uh, it really enables us to go out to the private sector and do pretty well with it, whether it's entrepreneurially or working for another company. It totally makes sense. So if a company wanted to um, engage with Yastis, do you have a like a minimum revenue requirement or anything like that? Uh, no, generally uh, the companies we work with make upward uh, at least at least around 700k to a, a million usually more uh but it's in that area but if it if it makes sense to to hire a cybersecurity consultant uh most likely if if a company will have at least 400,000 in revenue i'd say perfect perfect so what what do you think is like the what are some of the more common ways that um people today i mean you know it's the the security arena around the internet has gotten a bit become a bigger and bigger and bigger issue i mean when i was when i was actively working as a cto it was a good 10 years ago and i mean the biggest threat i had to deal with was um scammers who registered domains that kind of looked like our domain and then like would send out emails to like hijacked checks and stuff like that that would come through. So, but today it's changed a lot. So what are some of the most common ways people are breached? It's funny you say that because it's still pretty common today. I mean, 85 to 90% of all incidents, whether it's at a small, medium-sized or the biggest of companies such as MGM, and uh, we've seen a few other big breaches this week, it's still the same, still hacking. Like the, the, the really cool stuff, like you see in a movie, the zero-day vulnerabilities, that doesn't happen now. Like a lot of a lot of companies and even experts put, put more emphasis on those than it's worth and sometimes overlook the basics like phishing, things like two-factor authentication, you know, having segmentation. So that way, if someone gets in your system, they don't have access to everything. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And you mentioned, it was funny, I was going to ask you about um, MGM because we're both here in uh, the Vegas area. Common way to common way to gain access these days, isn't it? Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, they took a very common sense approach. They just looked on LinkedIn, uh, kind of figured out who would probably have a lot of access to their name and called the called the help desk and pretended to be them and within 10 minutes and some simple uh, questions being answered, they had access to get in the system. I mean, why why work any harder than you have to if the easy stuff works? <laughs> so if MGM had come to you um, before, even after that, um, what would your advice have been? Like, how could they have avoided that? Absolutely. I mean, that's a very common part of what I do. Uh, if, I, if I were doing anything in relation to their help desk, a big part of that would have been about authentication. I would have looked at their process, vet, vetting whoever uh, is contacting them, asking for, for system access. Uh, and from what I heard and verified uh, by at least a handful of sources related to the company, it was extremely simple information, uh, like name, position yeah. and it, that's just really not good enough i mean it getting into a system is very important i mean it's think about for any individual watching like you getting into your bank account that's pretty important so when you call your bank they ask you some serious questions probably four or five questions that most people won't know they don't make it they don't make it that easy on you and it's rightfully so so that, that's where right. i would even, definitely start. even on top of that they'll send you a code that then you have to give them over the phone for them to verify that it's actually you um yeah, I think I think that was a big it was a big shocker to a lot of people because they didn't realize, first of all, it's one of the times that it's gotten a lot of public, you know, publicity uh, because of what company it was. But um, also, interestingly, that it's been happening with a lot of casinos of late where apparently they're a little lax on their 
follow up with, with like finding out who's who. Um, you know, I've had people blame it on work from home. I've had them blame it on all sorts of things. And I'm like, hey, work from home doesn't matter if they, if they call in with the right questions and they give you the, rather the right answers <laughs> and, to the questions and you don't bother to validate what they're saying um, the correct way. I mean, heck, why not, why not be like, hold on, I have your phone number here. Let me call you. You know, I mean, even, even something as simple as that seems, yeah. seems crazy to me, but um oh well, absolutely absolutely it's it's easy to point the finger and say oh it's because you know we have to work from home or our software was the vulnerability not us but really there's safeguards that you can put in place that should be considered i mean a standard part of our scoping process is to ask the question do you have people working on site remote or both and then you take those things into account and you use things like mobile device management so you can see what people are doing on their purpose personal devices and their home computers, not everything, but just, you know, in relation to the, the, the company aspects of, of it. Sure. Well, what, what are some things that a business can do to avoid a hack like that? Uh, in, in relation to the phishing or remote, remote work in general? Um, just in relation to the phishing. In relation to the phishing, uh, it's definitely have strong two-factor authentication, whether it's a hardware key or at least an authenticator app on your smartphone, which is usually free. Uh, you, you really want to stay away from having no two-factor authentication, which is kind of common sense, but also anything that's phone number based, you know, whether it's text based or call based, because people are getting SIM swapped less left and right. It's not hard to do because uh, a threat actor can simply trick a phone uh, store employee or pay them two to $10,000 on the dark web and, and just get access to your phone number. And then if you're relying on that to protect your sensitive apps, they're, they're in your sensitive apps, even though you had the two-factor authentication on. So definitely strong two-factor authentication. Uh, you want good segmentation along with least privilege. So say you're a company that has 10 or 20 employees. You give everyone access to everything? No, you keep it minimal. You have two or three people with admin access. You don't want one in case that person leaves the company or whatever the case may be, but you want to limit that so that way there's less chance, there's less surface area for you to have something go wrong. Because in cybersecurity, the more you have, what, the, the more vulnerable you are. You know, If you have 20 pieces of software on your system, you're more vulnerable than someone that has 10 comparable you know, pieces of software. So lim limit your surface area. Uh, All right, so that's great stuff. If you wanna see the entire episode, that would be up here. And if you wanna see, a playlist of all episodes that would be up here.